My name is George Haley, and I'd like to just share a few incidents of uh, some things that led this uh, farm high school boy to uh, join the Adventist church and eventually send him to Korea. Um, I, uh, growing up on a farm in Michigan, our time was pretty much uh, taken up with uh, going to school and uh, taking care of the cattle and the crops and so forth. And so we really didn't have uh, very much time and energy and thought towards anything uh, spiritual or uh, towards church. But uh, my uncle, uh, my mom's uh, brother, uh, he began to be very interested in the Adventist church and uh, studied with them and joined the Adventist church and got married to a lady that was an Adventist. And this really impressed my dad because it had changed his life uh, style, his, uh, the way he did things. Uh, it just made him a new man when he came back from the army. And uh, so dad said, you know, the Adventists must really have something great for that to make that much difference in, in Uncle Dick. And uh, so he began to study. Uh, he had studied with other denominations, even the Jehovah's Witness, but the, they had not answered his questions. And he began to study with uh, some folks that were at the college at EMC and other folks. And the more he studied it, the more he was interested. And then in uh, 1949, they had an evangelistic series over near our area, and Elder Boothby, uh, Robert Boothby, was uh, putting on this program. And whenever Dad would talk with him, Elder Boothby would say, well, Brother Haley, um, let's see what the Bible says about that. And Dad was very encouraged by that. He said, all these other people, they give some other quote or some other book, but Elder Boothby, he gives the answer right out of the Bible. That's the man I've been looking for all the time. And so he studied with them, and us kids uh, sort of followed Dad because he was our pillar, he was our rock. And uh, in uh, the summer of uh, 1949, my dad and my two sisters and I were baptized into the Adventist church. <clears throat> and uh, so we uh, began to, uh, well, it changed our lifestyle probably more than we really realized at the time because there were a lot of things that, uh, well, we did differently or didn't do. And just a couple uh, examples. The year before when I started high school in my freshman year and I went out for, for football, and uh, then after baptism and beginning my sophomore year, why well, I, I went to the coach and I said uh, I couldn't continue really because I could see practice on Friday nights and Sabbath games and so forth, that, that would really be a problem. So I told the coach I couldn't continue. And he was very disappointed. Well, what, what can I do to help you uh, change your mind? Can, can you pass it? I said, no, I just can't do this anymore. And so I stopped playing football. And another example of one thing, just a little thing that uh, we, I did differently, I had uh, set out some traps to catch muskrats, to uh, uh, catch and uh, sell their pelts to make a little extra money. And one uh, Sabbath, I was back checking my trap line. I had to check them every day uh, so that they wouldn't get damaged or whatever. And I was back there and I thought, my, this is probably not something I ought to be doing on Sabbath. And so when I went to the house and I asked Dad, I said, what do you think about that? And Dad said, well, what do you think about it? And uh, that was his way of <laughs> making me think about it. And I did, and the next day I went back and pulled up all my traps. I said, this is not something I'm going to do. So just a little example of how joining the church changed our uh, way we did things and our lifestyle and uh, that kind of thing. And then as uh, time went on, and Dad suggested that maybe I uh, would want to consider going to the Christian Academy 
in Berrien Springs at uh, EMC. And I thought that, well, that sounded good. And so he said, we, we don't have much money. I don't know how we're going to do it financially, but the Lord will be with us and uh, you'll, you'll be able to do it. So the following year in, in 1951, I s started a school here at uh, the academy. And uh, EMC, we call it EMC Academy, Emmanuel Missionary College Academy. And uh, after I finished academy, graduated in uh, 52, and then I started college here at uh, EMC. And uh, now it's called Andrews University. And uh, I did my full time here and graduated in 57. I took agriculture as my major. And uh, as I was in probably in almost starting my third year, uh, Dad asked me, he said, are you going to be milking cows and pitching hay all the rest of your life? And I said, well, probably not. So what are you going to do with it? And that's when I uh, started taking uh, education classes so I could teach. And uh, so I would be an agriculture teacher. That was my thought. And uh, so I graduated in 57. And uh, shortly after that, the uh, supervisor of the local elementary school near our area came over and asked if I would be willing to teach school there. And I said, well, uh, one problem, my degree was in secondary education. I have no idea how to teach these first and second graders how to read. And he said, well, I don't think that's a problem. You, you can probably handle that. And the main thing is you teach the kids to pay attention and to mind. Uh, last year we had three teachers leave because the kids were so hard on them and were so rowdy. So if you just teach the kids to, to mind, and if they learn something in the process, why well, we'll be pleased with that. So I uh, started teaching there uh, in the fall of uh, 57. And uh, I had 38 kids. And it truly is a challenge. Anybody that's gone to an eight grade country school knows that uh, you've got all eight grades there and all of the various subjects from reading to civics, history, and all of that math. And it is a real challenge. There really is hardly enough time to get all of the classes for all of the grades in one day. It's a very uh, intense uh, way of uh, learning time management and personnel management. But anyway, I uh, was there about a, a month and I got this letter in the mail and it said, greetings from the President of the United States. Your friends and neighbors have chosen you. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is my draft notice. So I took it over to the supervisor uh, to see if he could get me uh, deferred to finish out the school year. And, and truthfully, I was kind of praying that he wouldn't be able to, because I thought going in the Army can't be any worse than uh, being in a room with these 38 kids trying to make them mine and learn something. So I was uh, kind of hoping that he wouldn't be able to get me off. And he went into the draft board in Dwajak and tried. And they said, no, no, we deferred this guy three times to uh, finish college. And he's got to go now. So I ended up uh, going into, up to Detroit and through the process. And then they sent us down to... Uh, Fort Leonard Wood for processing where we got our clothes and stuff. Just a little sidelight about Fort Leonard Wood. Uh, the rumor is that if you've been to Fort Leonard Wood, you go straight to heaven because you've already been to the other place. It's uh, quite a, anyway, interesting place. And I was there only a week and then went down to uh, Fort Sam Houston and did my basic training and uh, some other little training there, a uh, preventive medicine uh, course. And uh, then at the end of that, there was another uh, SDA GI there. And the captain came to the two of us and he said, you know, we have a uh, staff position here on post. It's a really good position. And just wondered if either one of you might be interested. And we looked at each other and says, huh, does a fish like water? Of course. And so he and the major went into his office 
And uh, they flipped a quarter, and uh, Buddy Bryant stayed in Texas, and I ended up going to Korea. Uh, I was a little disappointed with that result at the time, but I found out later that it wasn't so bad. And truthfully, I think the Lord had something to do with flipping that quarter. I think he pushed it over so that I would end up going to Korea because he had plans for me that I had no clue about. But anyway, that's the way the Lord has been leading me all the way. Uh, I don't make the decision. He makes it and he pushes me down the road. <laughs> so in the spring of 1958, I got on a Korean, I mean a U.S. Army uh, transport plane headed for Korea. And we stopped uh, once in uh, Midway Island and uh, stopped in Japan for a couple days and then took a ship, three-day uh, boat ride from Yokohama to uh, Incheon, Korea. And uh, we, a uh, bunch of us guys that uh, were on the ship, we uh, spent about three days at the processing center in uh, ASCOM, Korea. And then we were sent to our various bases uh, of uh, assignment. And the, I was sent to what they called First Med. Uh, it was a uh, medical compound where they had ambulance corps and hospital and so forth. So that was uh, where I was sent. And actually my we call it our MOS, our military uh, operations, was, uh, mine was uh, preventing medicine, checking uh, mouse traps and uh, making sure that uh, insects uh, were uh, caught and so forth. Anyway, it was preventing medicine, working in the, uh, in inspecting the uh, mess halls and so forth. And uh, when I got there, I guess you might say timing was everything because uh, the uh, captain asked me if I would be interested in uh, managing the local PX, the post exchange, which is actually the Korean Army store where the guys uh, buy their uh, toothpaste and all of their other personal supplies. And the man that was managing that before, he was due to leave and he'd been waiting for a replacement. And uh, the captain asked me if I'd be interested in doing that. I thought, well, my, I don't know. I'm a farmer. I don't know anything about running a store. And one of the GIs standing beside me kicked me in the shins and say, said, say yes, dummy. And uh, so I said, well, I'll give it a try. And uh, so they assigned me to this little PX. There were probably 250, 300 GIs on the, that compound. And uh, there was a couple of GI clerks and a Korean uh, accountant that uh, I was supposed to sort of supervise and make sure that the shelves on the PX were filled and everything was there. And as long as I did that, why the uh, captain was happy and so was I, because I didn't have to go out and do bivouac and uh, eat dust. <laughs> in the tents and so forth. I, I, it was a very good assignment. <clears throat> and uh, as time went on, I got better acquainted with uh, the folks there. And the first Friday that I was there on the post, uh, one of the GIs came over and asked me if I would be interested in going to church. And I thought, well, yeah. But how did he know that I was an SDA? And I later found out that he was a, a personnel clerk. He worked in the personnel department. So he knew what everybody did and where they came from and every, all about them. And uh, anyway, Sabbath morning, he came with another friend and picked me up and took me over to the uh, uh, SDA mission compound. And at that time, there were probably 10 or 12 mission families uh, there in Korea. Uh, on the mission compound and at the hospital compound. And uh, we'd have church there. And then afterwards, one of the mission families would uh, take turns, each one would take turns each week, uh, having us for lunch. 
and it varied all the way from maybe eight or ten GIs to maybe 30 or 35. So the missionaries, they didn't know how many guys were going to be there for lunch from one Sabbath to the next. But anyway, as time went on, I got better acquainted with the mission families. And on the hospital compound, there was one house where the teacher, single teacher, uh, who taught the mission kids, and uh, the uh, director of nurses, who was, uh, she was a single gal from Ohio. And uh, we got better acquainted. And usually after lunch, uh, us, most of us GIs, we would go together with some of the nurses from the hospital compound and uh, do a little medical work. We had a couple of dentists there and they'd maybe pull some teeth or just some minor medical things. And then afterwards for supper, we, for some reason or other, most of us gravitated to this house where these two single women were. I can't imagine why we would do that, but anyway. Uh, and as time went on, we got better acquainted and better acquainted and I got better acquainted and better acquainted with the nurse. And uh, well, anyway, she was in the kitchen making grilled cheese sandwiches and supper one night. And uh, then uh, I was standing there beside her and uh, there was this irresistible urge that I couldn't, it wasn't my fault. I reached over and kissed her on the cheek and I fully expected to get a spatula side the face. But, and I said, I'm sorry. And she didn't say anything, well, that's all right. And then I figured, well, my, maybe there's hope for this little PFC. <laughs> so I think that, that sparked our beginning of our getting together more. The following April, we had decided to get married. And uh, so we went over to uh, the mission headquarters to see Elder Davis. He was mission president. And we went up and knocked on his door and he said, uh, well, we were wondering when you two were gonna come and see us. We thought we were being very unobtrusive, but apparently somebody squealed on us. And uh, anyway, I told him the situation that uh, we were thinking of getting married and uh, if uh, we did, we'd probably go back to the States and uh, he would probably need to put in a call for a new director of nurses. And he said, well, that, that's uh, one thought, but uh, well, I have another idea. We have a college out here and the farm manager and uh, industrial superintendent, he's been gone for two years and we don't have anybody else in mind. And I understand you have an agriculture degree and a degree in education so you could teach and supervise the farm and the dairy and so forth. And that would work out really good and we wouldn't have to call a nurse right away. So I said, well, we'll think about that. And of course we did, and that's what I did. We, had, we got married in April, and uh, the, in October, I got discharged from the Army, and we moved out to the college, and I started my work there. So the college, my job then would be to supervise the farm and the dairy, and they had a delivery route that they sold produce downtown to the residents of Seoul. And, uh, that was basically how I started work at uh, Samyuk Tehak. At that time, we called it Crane Union College, but it's now Samyuk University. And uh, I'll explain a little more at another time.